I'm going to provide a very quick walkthrough of the features and capabilities available for an anonymous user of SOA Software's Enterprise API platform. In this case, the user has visited the portal for Acme Corporation, and Acme is choosing to highlight some specific APIs that they offer. They could choose to provide an app showcase, highlighting some of the apps that consume these APIs, but their focus right now is on getting the APIs out to their, to their public. So they have one particular API that they're highlighting with description and detail and four other APIs that they're choosing to show. Anonymous user could also use the search capabilities to view all of the public resources available in the system, apps, APIs, groups, users, anything that's made public. And we're going to get into the concepts and the differences between public and private APIs in further sessions. Now, despite the effort that Acme's gone to drive me to their customer API, I'm much more interested in money. So I'm going to go and have a look at the My Money API and see what this is all about. The first thing the developer will notice is a very social style interface to expose information about this API. There's basic description and version information, uh, information that describes how the API is structured, what kind of API it is, when it was last updated, who's following it, and the number of apps that are connected to it. We can also see the endpoints. So there's a sandbox and a production endpoint. A sandbox is a test endpoint for developers to use. The production course is the real endpoint. And in this case, we can see that there's no approval required for accessing the sandbox endpoint. That means that a developer could, can request access on behalf of their app, and it'll be automatically granted. But in order to get access to the production endpoint, they'll request access, and there'll be a workflow process that they'll walk through. The, the, high, the details description page for the API also has ratings. In this case, there's one rating marking the API as excellent. And there are reviews. There are no reviews for this particular API, but that's, we could easily add one once we sign in. Also, you'll notice that there's a board. The board is a fairly powerful concept. On the surface, it's a discussion forum, kind of like a Facebook wall. But what you'll see as we get further into this is that there's a lot of other things that can appear in these boards, from alerts, trouble tickets, discussions, um, and then you get into request objects, which are the workflow concept that the system uses to manage access requests and a whole bunch of other things. The thing that's very interesting to note about the board is that once a user's logged in, they can choose to follow a particular resource, API, app, etc., and then anything from the board of that resource will appear in the user's own dashboard, and, and we'll show you that when we get into the the logged in experience. We have documents. By default, the system provides resource centric documents, so it dynamically generates a document construct. Um, there's only one resource in this API, the, the money resource, and we can look at the operations exposed on that. Um, we can see here there's a get post, money for specific IDs, high level. We can look at the list of the operations in more detail. So the get operation gets a list of all your money. Post adds money, get retrieves, retrieves a specific uh, piece of money from your account. You can see it's uh, we, we've taken a few liberties with the resource definitions here. As well as the dynamically generated documentation, we also have the ability uh, to upload static HTML docs. So we can provide our own uh, static documentation to augment the dynamically generated capability. Interesting concept is the idea of legal documents. A legal doc um, provides the ability for the API administrator to upload docs and manage them. And these, these represent the legal agreements that the user will be required to accept when they're going to choose to access a particular API. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll, again, we'll show you that when we get into the developer experience. So another concept beyond the, the home page and the ability to, to browse through featured APIs and things that the users want to show you is the idea of the search capabilities in the product. We have a list of popular searches, so I can look at all of the APIs that are available. So we see a few more than, than just the ones that, uh, that are highlighted on the home page. And from the, the search filter, I can choose to, to expose all sorts of different things. I can look and see what are the, what are all the object types that I have available in the system. In this case, there's all of the discussions, everything that's that's visible and published. So let's try searching for the word great and see what comes up here. Okay, so we've got four discussions that happen to represent the, the, the word great. And for each of these discussions, we can see the API that they're in the context of um, or the app that they're in the context of and, and who created them. 
Uh, we can look at uh, trouble tickets. I don't think I've created any trouble tickets in the system, so we probably won't see any. But we get the idea of the kinds of resources that are available and active in the system. We can also, you realize when you look at the list of, of filters that there, there are an enormous number of constructs that are, that are indexed for search within this platform, including all of the reviews, all of the alerts and trouble tickets, all the discussions, um, and all of the documentation for an API. So this provides a very powerful way for a user to search for things they're interested in. So if I search for payment, for example, there's a payment API, which I can find and I can drill into and I can browse through the constructs and decide from looking at the documents if this is something that I want to use as part of my application. That's uh, basically the anonymous experience. Once a user decides that they found something they want to use and they choose to access it, They'll get driven to register or use an existing account, and that's going to be the subject for another demo we'll walk through in another time.